you have been following my Instagram for the past year, you may have seen my eye paintings. This series of paintings was inspired by 18th century lover's eye jewelry. And since it is the spooky season, I decided to transform myself into my most popular painting, the spider eyes. To start the transformation, I covered my eyebrows using a glue stick. Then to increase the size of my canvas, also known as my face, I applied the glue stick to my hairline. This is a technique I've seen used in drag, and I've always wanted to try it, since it gives me so much more room to weave my whip. To camouflage the shadows of the eyebrows and the hairline, I applied an orange concealer. I started with a small brush, and then I used my finger to pat it on. Needless to say, my finger did a better job. With any cream products, you want to always set it with a powder. Don't be shy with that powder. And at this point, I started to feel like the creepy baby in Toy Story, and I definitely contemplated my life choices but I managed to soldier on. My painting that I'm transforming into calls for a pastel teal skin tone, so I mixed these beautiful Major Look face paints. Yes, these are Lex's paints, and this is my first time using them. I'm actually really stoked. So if you wanna check out my previous video, you can learn more about them and see all the different colors. I scrape the colors out onto a palette and mix them with a metal spatula. I applied the color by dipping my brush into water and then into the paint to activate it. I find this method gives me a better control of the paint's texture. And I tend to like my paint on the drier side because it gives me a nice opacity. So by controlling the amount of water that's on your brush, you can control the opacity. And I gotta say these paints applied very nicely, especially in tandem with Lex's brushes. To my eyelids, I buffed a cream makeup in a corresponding teal color. This one in particular is a Makeup Forever flash stick. I do really like these around the eyes, and since I have pretty sensitive eyes, the fact that they don't irritate my eyes is a win-win for me. Next I'm going to add another layer of powder everywhere. I pat it on with a sponge, then buff it out with a fluffy powder brush. One of my favorite powders to use for these fantasy makeups is RCMA's Translucent Powder. It's really affordable and does a really great job. Moving right along, it's time for a little airbrush. I mixed up a custom shade of alcohol airbrush paints and then began contouring my face. Around the nose, I used a technique called masking, where you block off certain sections where you don't want paint. You can use cardboard or a piece of paper like I have here to cut out the shape you want. The nose contour in my painting is very specific, so this technique helps really get the results I want. I also masked around my forehead to create an exaggerated widow's peak, a la Miss Spider from James and the Giant Peach. And you can use this if you're shading with creams or eyeshadows as well. It's a really good technique to have in your skill set. I didn't want to answer a question about my airbrush from my last video. I use an Iwata Eclipse HP-CS. It's a very versatile gravity fed airbrush and I've been using it for a couple years now. I'm going to link it below if you want to check it out. It's a real workhorse of an airbrush.
I continued that contouring process along my neck and collarbones, making sure to deepen areas that I wanted to recede, like above and below the collarbone and around the neck tendons, so I'm not more anatomically correct with my terms, but you know what I mean. With a lighter teal airbrush paint, I highlighted the brows, cheekbones, my nose, my forehead, collarbones, and my chin. Anywhere where the light hits, highlight sits. I should put that on a t-shirt. I used the white body paint called Yeti to sketch in my eyebrow shapes. Then I used a darker teal alcohol paint to sketch these Jean Harlow brows in place. I do really love old Hollywood and find it inspires much of my personal work. Next, using a super black liquid eyeliner, I sketched in a wing to the top lid. Then I lined under the eye, making sure to exaggerate the inner corner of my eye to mimic my painting. I also made sure to connect the top liner to the bottom. And with that same liner, I'm gonna sketch in the bottom lashes. After painting hundreds of eyes, I have found the best way to draw lashes is to crisscross your lines and flick out as you pull your brush up. It tapers the line off nicely and it looks like an eyelash. To further darken the eyes, I added mascara and black eyeliner to my waterline. And to the inner corner, I added a flick of Yeti. I love that name, it's so cute. On to lashes, I applied a full set of lashes to the top lid. I want a pretty heavy, wispy lash as the base for the spider legs, which we'll be adding very shortly. With a matte teal eyeshadow, I added a vertical line detail around my lips. If you've seen my plaques, you know I have to add some black flat back pearls. These are definitely a throwback to the lover's eye jewelry because of the border of pearls, but they also work well because spiders, you know, they have those dark black glistening eyes. To glue them down, I dotted prosade along the perimeter of my face, making sure to emphasize my widow's peak. I'm using my little wax tipped picker upper to place the pearls onto the prosade. In between the medium pearls, I added smaller pearls. Let's jump right on into the spider lashes. These are super fun and easy to make. Using cardstock, I cut thin strips that tapered out to a point in various sizes. You're gonna need 16 strips for both eyes. And you can play with bending them as you go. For mine, I just bent them in two places. And for some reason, I only had holographic card stock, so I went ahead and painted my strips using black acrylic paint. But use black paper if you have it handy. To apply these lashes, I dipped the blunt end into prosade and carefully set it in place on the lower lid. I must have got a little impatient after just two legs, but I went ahead and jumped onto the lips. Using a black liquid lipstick, I drew in the top lip shape. The shape I envisioned was very bowed, again with that Hollywood influence. And then for the bottom, I also wanted a bow shape, so I drew in the same shape as the top, just inverted. 
And quite honestly, the lips are my favorite part of the whole makeup. They kind of remind me of the mark on a black widow's belly. Soldiering on, I added more spider lashes and I dropped them quite a few more times than I care to admit. And I definitely cursed myself. This is a very tedious task. The top lashes were a little harder to place. I found going in at a 45 degree angle helped get them in their final spots. The lashes needed to be anchored, so I glued down the ends, making sure to leave enough space so they wouldn't fly off my face. With Yeti, yet again, Yeti yet again, I highlighted the legs. I really love doing highlights, if you didn't know. It's really that last detail that makes everything sing. Wanted to include a mini wig tutorial like in my widow video just to help you guys spice up your wigs give you some ideas if you do like that please let me know in the comments this particular wig is from rockstar wigs and it makes all of my peggy bundy dreams come true it's actually been sitting in my wig closet for years waiting to star in my next tutorial so I did have to give it a nice brush through and a smooth down. Once it was ready for its close up, I started adding fake spider webs. This takes a lot of time, much like the lashes. To break up some of the density, I pull the webs in all different directions. This helps space out the fibers. I'm sure I'm saying a few choice words at the moment, but once I got the webs dispersed, I started draping the webbing onto the wig. I used a few bobby pins to secure the web, and I also entwined the web into the curls. Sorry I'm not home right now, I'm cursing at the spider webs. That was a dumb joke. Gwen Stefani would disown me. I just had to add even more spider legs. So I used these black bumpy pipe cleaners that I found at a craft store. And that's what they're called, bumpy pipe cleaners. I had to Google it to make sure in case any of you guys wanted to check them out. I cut these to suit my wig and then I secured them in place with bobby pins. I really like how the legs came out. They're really fun and they move when you move. So there's like an extra added animation to your hair. If there is one tip of advice that I could give to you all, it is to put your wig on first and then add lip gloss. I use this one from Wet n Wild because it has a beautiful blue shift that works so well with a black lipstick. To adorn my wig even further, I added these black glittery spiders. I just glued bobby pins onto them and sprinkled them throughout my hair. Okay, hold on starlings, we aren't done yet. To totally transform into my painting, I created a set of eyes. I took a pair of doll eyes and painted them completely black. Next, I added two yellow circles onto each eye. This took a couple coats, probably about five coats of yellow paint, because black is a hard color to cover. With black again, I added pupils to the irises. And to the pupils, I added those delicious white highlights. With a thinned down black acrylic paint, I added a shadow line to the eyes. I coated these eyes in a glossing medium. I believe I used two coats. And 
And finally, I glued on some false lashes to the eyeballs. And then I glued them to my lid, and this was, this was difficult, because I was basically blind. And I know this isn't practical to wear, because, well, you just can't see, but it made for some creepy video. Alright everybody, that's it for this spider lady. I gotta say thank you so much for all your support and watching my videos. Over the years, it's meant the world to me, and um, I hope you guys have enjoyed these Halloween videos. Hopefully I'll have another one up for you. Either way, happy Halloween and take care. And wear a mask. <laughs>